Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you. The accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. In a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Tessa Godden. But before that, I would like to say thank you for watching the show. It means a lot to me to connect with my cliented, like-minded women. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray and I help women to crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, um, to transform their presence, take control of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy and I use angelic Reiki, future life progression, past life regression, meditation, angel cards and hypnosis to help women who feel lost get clear on their destiny. And I've also created a transformational journey to help you take charge of your destiny. Now, each episode of this show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests like today's guest, Tessa Gooden, who will be sharing her story and how you can reclaim your power back into the world. Now, Tessa is an author, motivational speaker and philanthropist, and I can never pronounce that word properly, whose mission is to help you live your life as positively as possible. Tessa has gone through some dark and tough times, facing many hardships in her life, but by learning from her mistakes and with perseverance, determination and endurance, she is now a self-independent and the CEO of multiple businesses. Tessa knows that every obstacle in life has a way around it, and she has made it her mission to motivate, empower and put a smile on your face, whatever your issue. Tessa can speak eight languages, is the published author of an inspirational book called Self Growth, which you can find on Amazon, and now has her own show on Facebook called Real Talk with Kessa Good. Um, so without further ado, hello Kessa and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? I'm doing great, Ray. How are you today? Thank you for having me. I'm pleased to be here with you today. Hi, ah, it's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you for being on. So before we uh, get into this fascinating conversation, then please hit the like or love button and please say hello to let us know who is here. And if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can get updates on all recordings. You can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts as both Kessa and I want you to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. We will say hello to everyone who says hello and answer any questions or comments, either live or once the show is finished. So Kessa, why don't you tell us more about yourself and then how you can help women with reclaiming their power back in the world? Can you hear me, Kessa? Hi, Ray. We've lost connection with you. I'm not sure if uh, you're still there, but I'm not I, seeing I, you. And I'm I, you. I, can, I can see you and I can hear you. Um, so I don't know, don't know what's happened. Don't know what's happened there. Um, so bear with this whilst you're uh, watching this. As usually, it's the uh, technology of... Uh, of everything that doesn't seem to uh, be working. So, and communication, I'm going to Messenger. So we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully that's Kessa coming back. Are you back? Yeah, I lost connection with you. <laughs> <laughs> The energies just start going all over the place. Oh my god, I feel my body getting hot. What are you like? Oh my god, this is I am I am hot. Like, oh my god. Okay. Wow. So breathe. And we're um, and we're back. So as I was saying before, you can't and you disappeared right at the right moment when I said so kiss up. Tell us about your life or your journey and how you can help women. Wow. Okay. So I guess we're in for a magnificent ride today. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, as I was saying, thank you for having me before we got disconnected. Um, my life and my journey has been one of trial and triumphant uh, it's a, it's a very triumphant journey for me. And um, 
starting out, I'm going to tell a little story about yeah. me starting at uh, eight years old. Just yeah, a little story, do. okay? Uh, wherever you are that you're watching this, and um, maybe you can identify with it. And I'm speaking to young girls like who I was many years ago in Jamaica growing up or even in Africa. Mm -hmm. My childhood really started out of one of very, very humble beginnings. And when I mean humble beginnings, I mean in the sense where my mom um, was divorced with my dad at, when I was six years old. And she did everything she could uh, to help us provide for the family. And um, I had to start helping with cooking, cleaning, mm -hmm even becoming business mindset at the age of eight, like selling wow. newspapers, uh, <laughs> selling apples on the street. And um, I'm telling this story because I, I wanna show an aspect of determination, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. For a child that was born with such a disadvantaged life, okay? And when I say disadvantage is that, uh, when I was going to school, my mom didn't have money to pay for food, even lunch for me in school, okay, or even the clothes that I wear. And I remember that even my shoes that I was wearing to school, the bottom of it was coming off and I had to use rubber bands to, to tie these shoes up to go to school. I had to walk roughly about two miles. I'm not sure of the, dis um, the distance, but it's very yeah. far in the morning to get to school. And while my mom was doing her juice business, my brother and I had to stay up late in the night, sometimes 3, 4 a.m. in the morning. I'm talking about a nine-year-old's life at yeah. this time. To help my mom to make the juice, to get, you know, get them bottles and stuff so yeah. that she can sell them in the morning while we are at school. Now, many young children who's faced with such adversity wouldn't have the motivation to go to school and it was my motivation for me to get up every day and actually make it to school. So much so that I advanced in school. Uh, with all the challenges of this adversity, my, my how do you say, my determination of saying, mm -hmm. okay, you know what? I'm not gonna let that hold me back. I'm gonna go to school, I'm gonna show up there first, I'm gonna do the best that I can do, and I did that. And while at school, sometimes I couldn't even purchase my own lunch. I would have to ask kids in first grade or younger kids that I yeah. had lunch. Um, looking back at that, and what I took out of that lesson was, even though I was in adversity, and every time that I went to school and whatever I learned, I used to come back in my neighborhood and I set up a school in my mom's yard. And I will teach the kids how to read and how to write in the neighborhood, right? And I will, you know, provide food for them and stuff like that. And, and when I, I'm speaking about this because I heard a similar story to mine. And when it's coming about mission work and what I'm supposed to do in the world, mm. it's supposed to be touching lives of others who are in the same situation that I was in. Yeah. You know, they said that, you know, most people probably don't see angels, but I see angels every day. People like you and I, Ray, who mm -hmm. look out for each other, who look out for yeah. people who are in a similar situation. That is what an angel is. Mm -hmm. That is what it is to be there for someone that is maybe going through the darkest part of their yeah. life. You know, and no matter where or what the situation may be, I think that part of that story is to say, you can still take a good out of it and do greater good with it. And mm -hmm. looking over my life, I'm, I'm seeing myself and I'm saying, well, if you were able to take what you learned in school and teach other, it's the same pattern that I've been doing. No matter what I get, I give it away. I give it to someone. I do, I do that all over again. Yeah. And I never really tell the story because I never really realized that the strength that I have today, the determination that I have today came from this little girl, right? Yeah. Here. Oh. Okay. 
<laughs> I love <laughs> <had> the dress. <laughs> Thank you. So this is me at, I think it was nine or 12 at my mom's wedding in Jamaica. And I have no pictures of my past, none. I've always got rid of all pictures, never wanted to, to know where I'm coming from. Yeah. And over the past summer, I was in UK with my mom and my family who I haven't seen for almost 20 years. Wow. Uh, That's <laughs> yeah, a long so time. I, yeah, so it's after, you know, uh, almost 20 years, I'm reconnecting with my family. And I went in my mom home and my mom has my graduation pictures, my pictures of me being a child. And I, I freaked out, I lost it. <laughs> I lost it because I said to her, I'm not this person anymore. I'm not that person who graduated. I'm not that person anymore because I was, I feel that I was probably a fragmented soul when I went back home because after being separated from home for 20 years, can you imagine the yeah. journey of 20 years going back and then seeing the face of who you have been and you know yeah. the triumph that you have overcome? So I'm sharing her story today, and that's just the first chapter of this mm -hmm. little girl. For all the little girl on the streets of Varian Avenue, and let me tell you about the street I grew up on. Yeah. And I hope this is the right place to share it. The street I grew up on up until I was 14. If you should go there today, you may not want to sleep there. Yeah. You may not want to sleep there. And let me explain why. Most young men who grew up on that street either become a gunman or become killed most young girls like me mm -hmm. who grew up on that street either become a prostitute or a dancehall queen or being abused yeah. by some guys or something. You may walk to the store and just hear gunshot just like that for no reason. So you don't know if today may be your day or it may not be. Right? Yeah. I haven't been back there for 20 years. And the reason why I haven't been back to Jamaica for 20 years is because when I go, I want to bring something for young girls like me. Yeah. Who are going through what I've been through, who may think that there's not a light at the end of the tunnel. And I want to bring something that I can add to the community for those young girls. And that's one of the reasons why I haven't been back there for 20 years. I see the people that may have known me as a child and I can't identify with them anymore. I can't, mm -hmm. I can't, um, I don't know how to explain it. They see me as a memory of who they think I was as a child, but I've evolved so much that we're no longer vibrating at the same level. Yeah. So I want to go back and help those young ladies and basically show them that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. So I didn't just become a CEO without the struggle and the journey yeah. of you know self-discovery and finding self and claiming back my power from mm. whether it's an adversity from my community or adversity from my family or adversity from even the men, right? Yeah. So I had to learn over and over again how to reclaim me and how to become who I am and stand in my own identity. Yeah. So that's just a little bit about me. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I mean, it is, it is, it is quite... Um, you know, difficult, um, you know, to try and understand that if you've not actually lived, um, you know, you through that life, you know, sometimes we think we've got it, you know, we've got it tough in our lives. Um, but then you hear stories like yours, you know, that there's people that actually have it a lot worse than, than, than we do. And as yeah. is kind of like nothing, you know, there, there's, 
it, you know, it's, it's, it, it is like the sadness. Always someone whose life is unfolding in a completely different way from yours, and you never know what's happening um, in 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 that per, in that person's life. You know, even if you see them, you know, and they look all happy and and jolly and that, you don't know the history behind it or or yes. or what's going on. Yes. And 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 that is why it is so important for us as human beings that when we encounter each other, we acknowledge each other. Yeah. Because yeah. we just don't know the journey of each other. We don't we don't know where that person has been, right? So yeah. it's very important to acknowledge that person of yeah. being present. Yes. Yeah, exactly it is. So when you, um, so how old were you when you actually left Jamaica? Okay, so that chapter of my life began a journey of being alone at 14 or being on my own at 14. Okay. Okay. So it's a very, very, very interesting chapter. And... <laughs> Only by the grace of God, <laughs> I would say yeah. Yeah, I'm still <laughs> I'm still alive. Um, so that Kessa, I, I I call each of them a different version of myself. So this yeah. Kessa got me out of Jamaica, mm -hmm. and the Kessa at 14 years old got me surviving the United States of America at the age of 14 on the streets, foster oh care, group home, being raped being molested, being abused, being homeless, living in an abandoned building. I mean, the list goes on and yeah. on. Yeah. Okay. So that 14-year-old journey of Kessa is the story I've always told because I, I remember just always has to be strong. You know, always have to be strong to get by, to get through. You know, I mean, I'm cooking and selling food. I'm selling... Uh, Valentine's gifts on the street. I mean, I probably had about a hundred businesses throughout <laughs> my life. <laughs> yeah, I probably had about a hundred businesses. So that Kessa is the one that's always trying no matter what. Um, it doesn't matter how hard my situation got in, in America or, you know, um, during my journey. Yeah. Always trying and still helping others. I remember there was a point I was on welfare and was using my food stamp feeding the homeless people in the community. Oh, that's show. <laughs> you know, um, I'm laughing about it now, but it wasn't no joke when I when it was happening. No. Okay? It wasn't, I, I, I show um, humbleness to that person who was inside of me then, who yeah. walked with me through that journey to help me overcome it and not just overcome the adversity that I was going through, but heal from it because yeah. I don't feel the pain that it was created in me. I released that. I healed from that. And I know there's a lot of young ladies who are going through similar things and who um, have been through similar things. So it's two part. They're going through similar things. So after you go through it, now you have to heal through it. So there are many people who got through it, but has not released it and healed through it. And yeah. then there's many people who um, are going through it that have not overcome it yet. So I feel that that version of myself can help a lot of young teens, maybe runaway teens or homeless teens have faith. Mm -hmm that there is light at the end of the tunnel. And one thing I continued doing was improving myself. That was the number one key, was continue improving myself, reading, uh, listening to audiobooks, uh, instilling in myself the opposite of what I see in the world. Because in the world, seeing what I see will probably tell me there's no way out of this hell. Yeah. But I had to internalize that 
this hell can stay being hell, but I'm going to heaven. I'm going to live in heaven, which is in my mind. I need my mind to be free from all this madness. So I had to work my way out of that. Um, so that's the journey of the 14-year-old. Uh, before, it was more of me taking it from a victim perspective because my dad yeah. had to go to the military and that leaves me with an aunt and my aunt had to mm -hmm. put me out there. But you know what? That again is one of triumph and reclaiming who I am. Yeah. Yeah. So, you, you know, so it's obviously been a 14 year old and then and, and the start of, of that. Um, you know, how, how did you sort of like start healing yourself and, um, you know, get, getting clear? I mean, I, lo I love the fact that, that you try to improve yourself. And I think, um, books. I mean, I love books. I think books and knowledge are one of the most key things that anyone, anyone, anyone can have. And your imagination and the stories and that. I think they can get you through anything um, yes. with, with that. So, so, so was it the um, sort of like the reading, the knowledge that helped you with the healing process or, or, or what was it? I think that what played the most significant part in my recovery of healing with this journey is knowing that there's a higher power, something that is higher than who I am, because mm -hmm. it had to be, it has to be. Here's why it has to be. I didn't create myself. I didn't create the trees out there. I didn't create these things out there. So it's common sense that there must be some forces bigger than I am. And yes, you know, I identify seeing people doing evil or wicked stuff, but I've also identified seeing people doing great good and doing really good. And I look at the both sides and I said, okay, well, they must have a higher force. I have an eye force. Both of them is coexisting in the same time. Yeah. So I figured out at a very young age, and I think since I was a child, I've just even uh, been reminded of that with my friend um, that I visited in Gillingham, Kent, or Gillingham, Kent, I can't say that. Gillingham. <laughs> <laughs> this is so like I can't say philanthropy. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> philanthropy. Okay. Yeah. So uh, as I was visiting her, I was speaking to her about the spiritual aspect of life. And I'm like, I know you might think I'm crazy, but this is this and this is that. And she said, Kessa, no, I know you since you were like eight years old and you've always spoken like this. And I'm like, what? I thought that this spiritualness and this spiritual gift just came about now. She said, no, you were always much wiser than your age. You always spoke about things that maybe other people may think you were crazy, but not me because you always spoke like this. And now I understand that, you know, it is something that probably was rooted inside of me since I was a child. You know, my spiritual yeah. gifts or my spiritualness. Yes. Yeah. So I hope I answered your question. I, you, I, I didn't remember yeah, your question. Yeah. I went off. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 that, 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 that's no, that, that's fine. You, 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 you did actually. you um, answer that one. Now, obviously, you've you've got where you, where you are today. And we were talking earlier, and you're talking about manifesting. I know that's something that's really big. Um, you know, it's been big for a few years now. What with the secret and and all, all all that stuff, and and I know that people still find it difficult to to do that, even if they're following everything in you know in the secret. They go, well, I bought this book, I followed everything, but I'm still not manifesting. Um, okay, uh, finish, 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 finish. Go no, ahead. No, finish. No. Yeah, no. So, so it's it's like you're um, obviously you manifest your children manifest, and that. So, how how you know how do you do it? <laughs> okay, all right. So when it comes to manifestation, um, ever since I was a child, I've always had the gift of saying, "This will happen, mm -hmm. and it will happen." Okay, or it's going to rain, and it rained. Okay, didn't know I was doing that, by the way. I thought that that was just, uh, you know, just kids being yeah. kids, right? So I grew up um, 
saying, okay, so if something bad was going on, I would tell my mom sometimes. I would say, watch, before the end of this month, we're going to overcome it. And this is what's going to happen, such and such. And it was something we did as fun, my mom and I, even yeah. in my young adult age. And, you know, we'll say it and we agree and it happened, just as we say. Um, the Secret was the first spiritual book other than the Bible uh, that explained everything to me when mm. I got it, where, where I said, I got it now because I've been living that and I've been doing it consciously without knowing what it what it was called. Yeah. Okay. And even in my journey in Africa and stuff like that, even just to survive Africa, and that's before I've learned about the secret. For me to survive Africa, I know for a fact the law of attraction is there. Whether it's good or bad, you attract it to you. And I am yeah. 100% sure on that faith. So, you know, if, if you hear in secret with the conscious mind, you may not be able to utilize the manifestation power. But you, if you hear it with the subconscious mind, you can definitely tap into that power and it can automate itself so sometimes you may drift and start thinking oh something negative is going to happen oh yes it will happen yeah. right because consciously we, we we tend to think stuff and don't really realize that so the secret was my key to unlocking that this does exist it does exist okay um then along the journey i would say like napoleon hill um arenda uh Wayne Dyer, uh, Jim Rohn. I mean, I've studied so much of them. It's like <laughs> <laughs> I used to consume them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I, I would go days without eating, seriously, because of consuming these stuff in my brain. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it, it does exist. And anyone can manifest what they truly desire if they truly believe it. Yeah. And I, and I think an interesting thing there was as you said when you was a, a when you were a child and you didn't know it was a, it was the fun element so so there was fun behind it um and and i think and i think that sometimes there um thing um you know good you know if something really happens it um good for you so it's um you know i'm, I'm trying to think so as as a child you know you have that enthusiasm that Eagerness, you know, or you're going on a trip tomorrow and you have that, oh, I'm, going, I'm going on a trip tomorrow. You're not worried about <laughs> how, how you're going to get there, what's going to You're just thinking, I'm going to have a great trip tomorrow. And you have a great, you have a great trip. But if, if you're sort of like, you're a little bit older and you go, oh, I'm going on a trip tomorrow. Oh, but I've got to do this. I've got to do that. I've got to do that. Will it rain? Will it won't rain? And you're overthinking what could, what could go wrong rather than... Then. Well, for, for me, I still do it as a child. I'm probably one of the biggest kid you <laughs> meet or encounter, okay? <laughs> I try to be as mature as I can in front of people or yeah. publicly. But with my children, we are just four big kids having fun, okay? Just, <laughs> just having fun. And I will make my list, just like you see this is written today, right? Like, it's yeah. all fun. Every single day, I write a page of things that I want to manifest for. And I'll write okay. it and I'll just manifest it and I'll check it off the list to a point where it's like, okay, is it really that easy? So I will manifest, okay, before my uh, rebirth, I'm going to speak of that, last yeah. couple years ago, before I went to solitude, I literally, everything that was on my list to accomplish for the year, take me about two months to manifest wow. versus the whole year. So I think it's a... Uh, it's a natural capability, but even in the Bible, Jesus said, anything that you want, ask in my name and you shall receive it. And remind me of these words. And I've learned that since I was like 14 years old, remind me of these words. So when I'm going through a dark moment, like a really, really dark moment, I will say, you know, because Jesus is like my guidance. Yeah. I yeah. will say, 
I will say to him, I will say, you tell me that if I ask for this, it shall be given without a doubt. So I will say, I am over this situation. I am recovered from this situation. And you told me to remind you of your words. So I am reminding you that it is done. And then that's it. And I leave it. I yeah. leave it alone. I never go back to it. I've never rethought it. I've never, sometimes like there's situations in my life that maybe my mom or someone from my past has to remind me, like, girl, you're forgetting. Uh, I, I say it and I'm done with it. Yeah. I say it and, it and it's just like that, you know? So this, is, this, by the way, Ray, will be my first public conversation about my spirituality. Oh, wow. Thank you. <laughs> My absolute first, absolutely first public conversation about my spirituality, my belief system, and my guidance system. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you so yes. much. Baby. No, thank you for giving me the platform to share that side of me. Because in truth, if others don't know that side of me, then they will either think I'm either the Kessa they knew a few years ago or the Kessa they knew 10 years ago or the Kessa they knew 20 years ago, but not yeah. who I am today, not who I am. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for allowing me to share that. Oh, that, 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 that's brilliant. So, so you mentioned solitude then. So two years of solitude? The journey was a, roughly about two years. All right. And I am going to tell you that story, but my <laughs> computer battery is dying. So oh, no. So, yes. So let me see <laughs> if there's any plugs here first before I go into that, because I don't want technical yeah. difficulties to... Um, yeah, in the movie, you just talk in and it goes. Yeah, let me, let me just plug it in. Yeah. Okay. Give me a second. Yeah, yeah that's fine. <laughs> Ray, we may have to change location for a second, okay? <laughs> okay that's Just... fine. We, 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 get, we, get to, we get to see the, see the nice of a place that you're living in. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> Let's see if we could get this plugged in one second. And I may have to rearrange some stuff here. Hold on one second. Yeah, that's, that's, abs that's absolutely fine. Okay. And then I'm going to have to borrow this chair. <laughs> right here. Okay, let's hope that work. Yay! I love the <laughs> What you said? I like the mirrors in the background. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so we have to change location, so I apologize. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Now I can. Good. <laughs> okay. Good. Okay. So we're talking about my solitude. Yes. So two years ago, let's pass, let's rewind. Not yep. two years ago. Four years ago, I got caught up in a situation that is called Fake twin. Are you are you familiar with that? In with no. a relationship that being in a relationship that wasn't meant for you, but you thought you were divinely guided. All oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So twin folk. Or yeah. Yes. Okay. So I went through is a relationship that ended up abruptly. It went fast. That whole journey went fast. Now, after the end ending of that marriage um i spend the rest of the time rediscovering myself understanding who i am rebuilding who i am so i exit myself from the public eyes um mm -hmm. prior to that i was like being on boards and doing like um conventions and meetings and stuff and i took myself away and i went deeper on the spiritual journey 
And when I say deeper, I mean so deep that so much of the universe unlocked itself to me. It opened up in a way that, wow, was yeah. hard to describe it. It's, it's you can't. How huh? would you say? It's one of those you can't. Yes. You can't describe. Yes. So um, it took me two years, well, a to almost two years to go through that. And this is what I called like a rebirth process where everything that you thought you were, everything that you thought you wanted to become, yeah. everything that society push on you, all the mistakes that you made, um, all the choices that you make was revealed in front of you. It's kind of like what they would say, the Akashic Record. And I yeah. never really study about these things. This is stuff that I personally know internally. This is not yeah. things that I read about or anything like that. It all revealed itself to me and say, okay, this was your choices. This is where you went wrong. This is where you made a mistake. This is what you need to release. This is what you need to, this is the path you need to go down. This is what you need to focus on. And this yeah. is how to identify the distractions, right? And that's what solitude did for me. It helped me to identify that. And in the process of my solitude, it wasn't like solitude from everything because I, I'm still raising three kids by myself. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a single mom. So what kind of solitude can one really get yeah. with, with three kids, right? Uh, but um, throughout the journey of discovering who I was, who I am, who I need to be or, or where I need to be, that... Uh, it was an interesting journey. And the kids was with me through that part there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that, that, that's, that's, that's amazing that you can actually do that journey and have your kids involved um, as, as well because they can then, it's sort of like they understand things a little bit more about their own, their own self um, and the confidence they'll give them um, in their future. Yes, to understand that this side does exist. Yeah. Um, it's one of the things that's not taught in our public school systems. So mm. I homeschool my kids to make sure they learn that because I, I would really love for them not to make the choices or go down the road that I went down. And the reason why I shared the story about me being a, a, um, less privileged in Jamaica is because I recently was speaking to my kids about that because they don't know these things. They don't have yeah. a clue. Yeah. So I'm like, you guys don't know how privileged you guys are to be able to say, okay, you have dinner tonight. Okay. Yeah. Or, you know, so I started telling them about the street because I want to go to Jamaica. And I started hmm. telling them about the street that I grew up on. And they were like, oh, my God, I'm never going to Jamaica, mommy. And I, they're like, you're so strong. And I try to share that because I yeah. realize that at this point of life, if I don't share that with them, they're not going to understand that. Yes. Yeah. So I, I'm starting to share it with them. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's absolutely amazing. And, you know, and your story, kind of like how you got from there and, you know, where, where, where you are now, you know, it, it's, it's brilliant to sort of like see it um, unfolding and that from the start to sort of like the middle and, and, to, and to kind of like going deeper within yourself and accept it, accepting yourself more, I, yes. I think. Yes, um, accepting myself in the... I would say second to last phase of before the whole spiritual awakening stuff, um, gaining, re reclaiming yourself, right? Um, mm. We were talking about reclaiming you. Yeah. There was a specific situation where I was married and living in Germany, and my ex-husband uh, is military personnel, and so, you know, as a military family, you get supported. Yeah. Um, yeah. They don't get much salary, but you get supported like free housing or mm. food or, or stuff like that. As I was living in Germany and my marriage was going south, 
get in really, really sour things that stuff that I don't want my kids yeah, to Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. yeah. And I said, you know what? I need to start going to school to do more for me, right? Because I'm supporting, here I am supporting my husband in his career, but the career always came first. So I realized, okay, it's time to work on me. At that time, I was 420 pounds. I have a picture. Wow. 420 pounds. I started slowly going to college. That was step one of reclaiming who I am. And I was 25 at the time, um, going to college. And then the marriage got worse and worse. The more I did for myself is the worse the marriage got. Yeah. Okay. That was my sign that I'm on the right path. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. So long story short, I took three kids. I left Germany at the age of 25, zero dollars, walk away from the government benefit, government uh, medical, the government housing, every last one of the support that I was getting from my ex-husband. And I start over by sleeping on the floor in a friend's house. So that is one part of reclaiming your identity, mm -hmm. reclaiming who you are. Because we often get caught up in the so-called securities that are provided for us. Yeah. And we kill a piece of us daily because of those securities that being provided yeah. for us, right? We we sell our souls then in, in, in a sense I would call it because you, you you feel empty, you feel miserable in a situation like that. Yeah. You know, and you feel powerless. Not to mention powerless is as if you, you cannot breathe unless this person supports you. Yeah. And then when you put yourself in situations like that, what happens? The person who has the power make you feel more powerless. Yeah. Right? So they don't really be humble about the situation in the sense that they're handling the power right. They're reminding you daily that you are powerless. Yeah. So it's up to us to take that step back and reclaim back that power. Okay? And how we reclaim back that power is by adding more to who we are and remembering who we are and where we want to be. Acknowledging that the situation is not our fault and basically releasing that situation and spend time, like I said, in solitude to repair the damages that it done to your soul. Because mm. anyone in that situation will experience what I call a fragmented soul. So now we have to go back into those situations, reclaim the power from those people who has pulled us apart. Yeah. So yeah. that is reclaiming you. Yeah, and, and you know, and, and when you break it down like that, that makes that that kind of like makes absolute, you know, ab, ab, absolute sense. Um, yeah, but about how you get those parts back and, and you actually become whole again. You actually become yes. who you are meant to be in the present time. Yes, yes. Because um, um, what what we also experience, and I'm speaking from my, myself, what we also experience is what I call a cultural identity uh, that try to pull your power away, uh, society identity that try to pull your power away, um, familial identity that try to pull that away. I call those forms of bullying. It's kind of like yeah. being in school and kids bully you, right? So cultural identity or familial identity is like, oh, you need to be married by the time you're yeah. 30. Okay. You need to marry a white person or you need to marry a skinny person or you need to marry a Catholic person or you need yeah. to this and you need to that. So you try to conform to fit in all those expectations of every single body except who you are supposed to be. Yeah. Right. So so when you when you're trying to fit into each of these categories, you're giving pieces of your souls away. You're giving pieces of your yourself away. So like for example, oh, you can't get married um, you can't get divorced because you have kids. So stay in a bad yeah. marriage. 
that is the number one, I think. Yeah. Staying a bad marriage, you get keep getting mentally abused over and over and over again because you have kids to so do it for the kids. Yeah. In in my situation, I did it for the kids. I divorced him. Why? Because my kids were seeing arguing, fighting, yeah. and an unhealthy situation. And I think that culturally we we put these restrictions on the other person mm. that that person sometimes can get lost in the journey and some people will never find their way back some will just conform and just say okay i'm just going to do it this way mommy's happy this way she is skinny or she is you know light skin yeah. or, and, and 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 they sit down with someone that is not making them happy because mommy's happy yeah and i've all I've always taught my kids that it's not about me. I've had my time around in this life. I've had my journey. It's about you, how you want to live your life, how you want to build you. This is your journey. I'm here to support you guys in this journey. This I'm not this is not my journey you're here to live. It's not what I want for you. It's what you want to do. So yeah. how like my kids right now, they're homeschooled. I'm like, do you want no, we don't want to go in the public school system. My eldest son, he's um, he's 14, and since six, since he was six, he's on ADHD medication. Mm. Up until five years ago, I realized that that wasn't the route to go. Yeah, and he's a lot better now without that. So understanding these things, and you know, try to take back where I give away a little bit yeah. of the situation, and that's reclaiming who you truly are. I believe. Yeah. Um, and then that then that that's brilliant that makes absolute sense so thank you so much for for sharing that and breaking it down for us um yeah so that's that's really good yeah good thank you thank you so much um so you know everyone that's um that's that's watching this hope you found it um insightful um and the words of wisdom that kessa's given you will help you on your journey now kessa um I do guided meditations, angel card readings. So every week when I do this show, I ask my guest. So so it's sure. So would you like me to do an angel card for you and everyone watching, or a guided meditation? You get to choose. I think an angel card will work. Yeah, <laughs> angel cards. <laughs> we we like angel cards. <laughs> Uh, that's so I'll just give this a quick lens and best. Now, as those that are watching know, um, although I work with the past, with past life regression, that is to heal the past. And although I work with the future, that is to show you your future. For those come back to being in the present. So when I do the angel cards, it's for what we know need to know for our highest good at this moment in time. So... What do Kessa and everyone who's watching this need to know for their high school this moment in time? Just Kessa, anything else watching? Oh, okay, and that one's jumped out. So, brilliant card. Gates of Triumph. Six, I knew was the card coming. <laughs> success expands your life. <laughs> I get that in there. <laughs> I knew that was coming out. <laughs> I knew it was going to say Triumph. <laughs> yeah, it, it just, you know, and that one, and that one, flew, you know, and that that one, that one literally um, uh, flew out, you, you know, and it's these gates wide open with the sunshine in the background, um, and, and and everything. So, so it's absolutely apt that 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 card has come out, you know, and it just goes to show it's just been forcing what you already know. Um, and and that and giving you the encouragement to carry on um, with with what you're doing and how you're going and and that because it is you know the success that you, that you're having um, with your with, with taking back your power and your self growth is giving you the triumph of actually being back in your power and being who you're meant to be and that you're going to be able you know to help her. Um, those 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 young girls and that in the future and that so it's brilliant that card came out thank you thank you and before we started we spoke about triumphant over adverse situations we did and yeah yes 
And because the gates are open, hopefully many young people, whether it's on a collective level or a physical level, will have triumph over their stories, over their situation. Exactly. So if Kessa, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? Okay, so I am on Facebook, so they can search my name, Kessa mm -hmm. Gooden, yeah. or they could go to my website, KessaGoodenTeam.com. So again, that's KessaGoodenTeam.com. And they will be able to write me, message me, comment on this post, because I'll share it on my page. Mm -hmm. uh, comment on there and message me. Um, yeah. So. Brilliant. Um, and what I'll do after this is finished, I'll put those um, I'll put those links in the comments so that people can just can just just clear and um, click on this. Um, okay. so, so thank you, everyone, for watching this. And I would like you to invite the, invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more women and young ladies who feel lost and they want to get clear on their destiny just like you. And if you need um, help finding and taking charge of your destiny and getting clear on your path, then I would love to be that guide for you. So reach out and connect with me as I'd love to book a 20 to 30 minute session via Skype or Messenger with you so that we can have a quick chat, so we can find out more about each other. I can educate you on what I do and how I can help you on your journey. And I look forward to seeing you all next week and joining me on Wednesday the 3rd of April at 8 p.m. UK time, where I'll be talking to my guest, Kira Lani, who'll be talking about how you can master your energy and connect to your divine nature through connection to nature. So everybody, I will see you then. And Tessa, again, thank you so much for being there and part of this show and sharing your story with us. Thank you so much, Ray, for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much.